What's going on, guys? Sorry, this feels a little weird. I haven't reviewed a model in a while. <laughs> but today on this Shoki Reviews, we're going to take a look at the newest kit from the Flame Toys Fury model line. It is, of course, the Transformers model kit Starscream. And first and foremost, we've got to look at a box art, which is absolutely gorgeous. It shows Starscream here in his bot mode, just chilling out floating here over what is definitely like a battle scene it does look like earth it looks like there's some other stuff going on it doesn't really look cybertronian but it's so pretty and you know you got some nice lighting effects here on the thrusters you got the eyes glowing there's no rays out here it just looks good you got some f-22 raptors going on in the background which okay <laughs> i don't know if the call back to the uh bayverse or something i don't know what's going on there but this is really good and of course you got authentic transformers thing there because flame toys is what it is but you've got nothing on the bottom but you do get a continuation of the box art so that's pretty cool come to this side and you've got starscream model kit close up of his face just looks really really good the box has gotten a little beat up here and come back to the other side, once again, continuation of the box art, so that's pretty good. And on the back, or the bottom I should say, you have all of these stuff. So, Starscream Model Kit, Transformers, Shirai right, Model Kit, Articulation, and good articulation with over 40 movable joints. Any pose can be easily set. Yeah, maybe. Design reveals a modernized and shape optimized Starscream. That's pretty true. Detail. Content. There's all the stuff that's in the box, you can do all the things there. And it just looks pretty good. You got your warnings right there. And D4 Toys information, because, you know, it is what it is. You got the websites and all those things. Made in China, ages 15 and up. Hey, I'm right in the middle of that. And you've got EBS, polyethylene, and polystyrene. So um, I'm not entirely certain where the polystyrene is, but I definitely know where the polyethylene is and the EBS for most things. So it is what it is. But guys, we can go ahead and flip the box over because even though he is the air commander he still can't resist being turned upside down ah, feels good to be back at work <laughs> so let's get to the actual kit and here we have starscream out here looking all gorgeous and airplaney and guys, there is a build log for this video that will come, or for this review that will come out after the video. So that we can see how I did this thing. Now, this thing is almost entirely painted. There's only two spots that are actually, well, I guess technically four spots that are actually still bare plastic. And that is these two knee spots right here and the shoulder joints right inside there are the only things that didn't get any paint. Everything else did, and it came out amazing. And uh, like I said, uh, if you want the details, you can definitely get that in the build log. But one thing you'll notice, he's on a stand. Something that the Prime model kits didn't do. He does have a hole right there under his booty that does allow you to mount him on any kind of Gumpla or Tomashi stand that uses a peg. He's probably more specifically aimed at Gumpla. But either way, he's very, very cool. I did really enjoy this kit, although it definitely has its flaws just like the previous kits did. But we'll start up real close here on the head, which looks fantastic. I like the mold. I like the screen or the screens or the little uh, vents in the side of the face. And I did paint his eyes up all nice and red and then some orange dots there. Probably need a little bit of yellow if I'm honest. But the faceplate got some silver and then a little bit of weathering to add some depth to it. Looks very, very good. However, there is one major problem with his neck. If I turn his head, you can see it. His head is really on a pedestal there. And that neck joint needs to be really short. And so it's a ball joint at the top, ball joint at the bottom. And it can move back and forth. But you can see there, that is just a really, really tall uh, kind of stack right up below the head. So I'm thinking that needs to be shortened just a little bit. But then that looks really good. And you can see, well, I turned it into the shadows. You can see I've got a lot of weathering on there. Well, I say a lot. I did some light weathering on him. So the red is a kind of a clear red over the actual base. Plastic came out very nice. And then you've got a um, 
which gray was that oh that's a um, gunship gray there for any of the darker grays so here and then back here the head the vents and stuff like that these needed to be painted back here i don't even believe they gave you stickers for that so just to make it accurate those need to be painted looks pretty good the uh, cockpit comes in clear you can leave it clear or paint it like i did it's entirely up to you and i was on the fence as you'll see in the video uh, about painting the blue stuff but it came out almost perfect like just the exact way it needed to be now he doesn't have any chest articulation so there's no butterflies or anything else like that but the shoulders do articulate way up so there's a joint right there that is rotating up there and then of course actual shoulder pivot here and then you can rotate it down and you can move it forward and back just a little bit but he does hit the chest but if you maybe try to extend it out just a little bit you can get a little more kind of butterfly out of there but just be careful because you don't want to snap off any of your pegs you've worked a lot to get in here as you guys can see here i did a silver for any of his gray parts and i love it a lot of people are gonna be like a g1 starscream has to be a pale gray shut up it's fine looks good and i did a little bit of weathering you can see some speckling there with a little bit of rust colored paint and then some dirt some dust his no rays here are pretty cool they are removable and because we want to show him holding one in a, here in a little bit, I'll pull that off. And you can see they're just mounted in a polycap. Now, I kind of expect this polycap to split over time, similar to the way that Optimus's hip did, but we shall see. And here you can see where I just used some German gray on the joints on the inside. So you do have a bicep rotation. The shoulder can move independently of the arm, which is cool. So you can now move it up here, up here, and there all at the same time. He can sort of go around, but you will hit the wings almost instantly. So you're not going to be able to go all the way around. But I guess if you're clever using some bicep rotation and whoops, breaking off the hand a little bit, you can get kind of a high teacher. So, hi, my name is Starscream. It's very good. Okay, now he does have double jointed elbows so up here and down here but they are very stiff due to being painted and the joints the polycaps for the joints are very very stiff and solid so that's a good thing for future um, maneuverability and hopefully sustainability but there you go you get a really really nice articulated elbow and the wrist, as you saw, is just a ball joint, so nothing imp impressive happening there. Now, he does have multiple ball joints, so from here to here to here is all ball joints for the torso, so he can rock back decently far, and you can see a whole bunch of crap that I kind of threw under there. And you can rock him forward a little bit. Problem being that this uh, cockpit section really does hinder it. However, that is articulated as well. So that is on a swivel that can kick up like this, and you can really use that ab crunch, although it incredibly breaks the illusion here. If you tuck this under like so, and I guess you can yeah, shove it in like that, you can really kind of get him in a better pose, but he won't do it fluidly, so that's the only thing that sucks. Now, I'll talk about this, because it is a problem you may encounter if you build this kit. The way that this goes together, so it's a hinge on this side, and then a polycap over here that can rotate, and then it's kind of a stick that goes in between. So it can pivot on this side and that side. The only problem is that the way this is held together is with two sandwiched pieces holding that joint together. And when I first put this together and I needed to pull it back off to uh, do a little bit of work to it, it totally just kept popping out so ultimately i ended up having to glue these two sandwiched pieces together to make sure that joint would always stay as one now you can do side to side bending like so which looks cool and hold on we gotta rock this back so see right there where it needed to come out a little bit so you it's a little more dynamic than just kind of pushing on it so you can get some good motion there, and he can twist both at the base, in the middle, all of the above. So you can really kind of articulate his 
skinny butt. I actually really like this design, to be totally honest with all of you. His hip skirts are just like Gundam hip skirts. There are just little ball joints mounted up in here. Though be wary because they are very small plastic. Side skirts do move. Now these things did need to be painted or you would need to use a sticker here. Uh, there's a weird reflective one for that. And the hips are very different. So you actually have them on a center pivot. So you can raise them up or drop them down. It's nothing new. We've seen it in Gundams and other things before. So you can really get him to do a perfect Jean-Claude. No problem there. Front to back is a little bit different because you're going to be fighting other things. So front skirt, I'm going to get in the way there. The back skirt, while it does move, doesn't really go very far just with the way it's constructed. And I really don't want to mess it up, but you can go straight back at best. Okay, and you do get thigh rotation like you do. You could probably go almost all the way around, but as with Gundams, why would you? Big, big double jointed knee here that can kick himself in the butt with his own wings. So look at that, and of course you see some chipping, some weathering all around those knees. Like I said, I didn't want to go overboard with him. I wanted him to have some scratches and some rust and dirt, but nothing major. I've had to guess these are styrene because they feel different to the other things. Now, another thing that you're going to have to pay attention to, this entire kneecap is all blue, but it's supposed to be body color. So it's supposed to look like this, but it does not, and you'll have to use paint or something to get yourselves there in the interim, or just leave it if you're fine with it. But when you come down here, you get a little bit of that gray i love to use so much on all these things so a little bit of gray detailing right in here and all of these little divots all over that same thing on the foot actually up here on the arm as well all got things like that so it's pretty good and these uh intakes here on the side of the legs also got painted before assembling them i really dug the way this thing was layered the way it goes together is actually very very cool so and these guys actually do slide up and down but i don't have them up against the paint because i don't want to screw it up so those move which is pretty neat the kneecaps themselves actually do move in and out a little bit and once again a little bit of gray paint right on those edges to bring it out same thing right there same thing right here just to make everything move and as you can see i've got some rust and some dirt and grime happening down here on the feet and a little bit of like chipping Nothing major. This one's a little bit worse off, so he really stepped in it on this foot. But that's throwing in together actually just some green and red paint, swirling it together, and then just dry brushing it on to get that effect. And then the ankles back down here are on ball joints, and they don't really do much of anything, but the toe point does move down like that. And yes, you can even paint the very bottom of the foot if one is so inclined. Now coming back here to the rear thruster wings here on the back of the legs they have this huge cutout for them which is good and then you can move them in and out but just be wary that if you paint them you're gonna want to sand everything that i painted every joint and everything i did give a light sanding to to give a little bit of clearancing except for back here so these guys are going to have some scrapage and that's going to suck in the future but you know what it's the back nobody's going to pay that much attention to it that's why i screwed up a lot of things for the wings and i did that Speaking of coming to the back, you can see the really nice GN drive he's got going on here. It really does look like one. So that's the nose cone for his jet mode, of course. And I've got, it's going to be a little hard to see because of where the light is hitting here. But I've got some gray right there in that little divot, but then purple going all the way around it. The wings are beautiful and detailed and textured. And even to the point that they have the embossed kind of or raised Decepticon logo. Now they give you Decepticon stickers for that. They also give you big giant stickers for these stripes. So the red stripe and the white stripe both come in stickers. I did it the hard way, as you'll see in the build video. And you see that I've got some scratches and some divots and stuff like that. A little bit of rust going on. But one thing I tried to do, and probably more prevalent on the front than the back, is because he is a jet and this will be the front of his wings... I tried to have grime and stuff coming up this direction, and I may or may not have accomplished that to some degree. I've just got a bunch of different things here. And I did have to figure out which way to put the wings because the paint wasn't great both sides, so I just had to choose the better ones. 
They do swivel this way and they do rotate a little bit. So you can kind of get them out of the way if they are uh, blocking up against things. Nothing else back here moves. And the wings are just held on by just this little clip kind of here where you just slide it in. So I used that spot as my uh, my clipping area when I was painting because I knew that even after being painted it wouldn't make a difference. But just aesthetically, I really dig the look with the exception of this ridiculous neck joint. And it's even loose. That's what's really annoying. Now, one thing he does come with, and you can see I painted this face silver. He does come with a second faceplate because it's all part of the gray runner. So I actually did one just in primer gray. It actually looks like blank plastic, but it is in primer gray. And it made a couple little gold eyes. Now, one thing I've never done is try to swap the faces out. It's not super difficult, except for the fact this head doesn't like to come off now. So I might post pictures later of what a more blank uh, G1 looking face will look like. But in the meantime, let's take a look at a Null Ray. Get him to stand. So as his main weapons, you do get the really, really nicely done Null Rays here. They are just sandwiched together pieces with a handle that does flip out down here. So if he wants to hold them, you totally can do that. And I'll show that off here in a minute. I did do some gray detail work here and here and then all along these little grooves and then this thing here whatever it is got some purple paint these stripes also got some purple paint I'm trying to catch the light there and then a bit of weathering down here by the muzzle just to show that it's been used just uh, different types of paint and some uh, soot from a weathering kit <clears throat> now along with those you do get an assortment of hands like you should so you get the two expressive hands that are on the kit and I've, you get two, i got to see which ones I've got here, get two fisted hands, like so, very easy, and you get some weapon holding hands, so that's what we'll do real quick, we'll go ahead and swap out for those, god that's a scary noise every time it happens, but before I do that, let me go ahead and put the weapon in his hand, it's something I have not done as of yet. Okay. Now, I could assume that it drops in from above, no problem, but I'm not going to make that assumption. Okay, so like so. And then apply the thumb. Oh, yeah. That's pretty. Uh, he's not going to hold it tight by any means, but... You can get him to hold it, so you can actually wield his null rays, not just on the shoulder. And once again, those are posable to some degree. They will run into things as you do. The shoulders run into things, so just be careful, especially if you're going to paint it. Uh, you're just going to bump into things. But that is just gorgeous. It really, really is. And I like the fact that it came with more hands than uh, prim the Primes did. Those only came with weapon holding hands and fist hands. I wish it had come with expressive hands, and I'm pretty sure I brought that up. And speaking of the Primes... Here they are in comparison, sort of. <laughs> so size-wise, I think he's just a hair shorter without the wings. Of course, he's on the stand, so that's not really helping scale but they definitely all work together considering he you know starscream is a jet and primes are supposed to be a truck you know size wise they work out and like i said i was going for a weathered look but not an overly weathered look so actually i'm really digging this pose i'm gonna have to get some more pictures in it that's pretty cool but as it goes, I'm loving these Flame Toys kits. And the fact that I fully painted this one where I only half painted these guys uh, kind of made me a lot more invested. I needed the red to look better than the stock plastic, whereas for these guys, it was okay. You know, just leaving the main, main colors alone and painting what I needed to otherwise. Um, also, the Primes are a bit more articulate with the way their arms work. But they do have their problems, as previously discussed. The torso is probably equal, but this guy does, of course, have the cockpit problem there. But overall, I'm really digging these. I need to get more. Bumblebee being next, or after IDW Prime, 
is gonna be my new like favorite thing I think with all of his weapons and everything associated to it oh man this and he's posable but I think the the skirts tend to actually cause more problems for posing than anything else so you really have to kind of get the knees and everything where you need them no pun intended and point the toes a little bit and you can probably get a very cool look going on here. Let me get his other fist out. There we go. So, yeah. I'm really digging the Starscream. And we do have the other Seekers coming at some point this year. They've already been shown off. So, you best believe I'm definitely getting me a Thundercracker and a Skywarp. Because they will look absolutely gorgeous with this Starscream. But guys, uh, that's going to be it for the review part. If you want to go check out the build log, it's not quite as in-depth as it was for the Prime kits. Um, I mean, I show the techniques, but I show off a lot of what I had to go through for this kit if you really want to paint it this way. And if you want to check out my buddy Matthew Dillard Baldwin's version of his that he had painted, which is a very different aesthetic to what I did, uh, go right ahead and do that. I'll link it down below. But if you want to go ahead and give me a big old thumbs up for my hard work, by all means. And if you want to tweet this out to Flame Toys and show them the good work I did on their awesome model kit, please do. I want to see if I can get a little bit of recognition because that would be amazing. And you can hit that subscribe button. You can check out the t-shirts. You can check out the Patreon. You can do all the things to help support the channel, guys. That would be great. But in the meantime, I will catch you later on the next build. Remember, as always, to keep on building.